Hello everybody, in this lesson, we're gonna be taking a look at find and find all. Really, we're gonna be looking at a ton of different things in this lesson. This is where we really start digging in, seeing how we can extract specific information from our web page. But in order to do that, let's set everything up where we actually bring in the HTML like we did in the last lesson. And we're just gonna write all this out one more time just for practice, if nothing else. And then we'll get into actually getting that information from the HTML. So we're going to start by saying from VS4 import beautiful soup. There we go. And import requests. We'll go ahead and run this. Then we're going to come up here, grab our HTML or sorry, our URLs. So we'll say URL is equal to, and we'll have that right here. Now we need to say page is equal to, and then we'll do requests.get and then we'll put in our URL right here. And we're gonna come over here and run this. And lastly, we need to say soup. So we'll say soup is equal to beautiful soup. There we go. And then within our parentheses, we need to specify the page.txt because we need that and our parser, which is HTML. And there we go. And let's go ahead and run this. Let's print it out, make sure it's working. And there we go. So. We have our soup right here. All this should look really similar to uh, our last lesson. And so now we've brought in our HTML from our page. We have a lot, a lot, a lot of information in here. Now, really quickly, let's come over and let's inspect our web page. Now in here, we have a ton of information, right? We have a bunch of different tags and classes and all these other things, but how do we actually use these? Well, that's where the find and find all is gonna come into play and they're pretty similar and you'll see that in just a little bit. But let's say we want to take uh, one of these tags and let's come down. Let's say we just wanna take this div tag. Now, there's gonna be a lot of different div tags in our HTML, but let's just come right here. Let's go down and let's say, we're gonna call soup, we're gonna say soup, that's all of our information. We're gonna say dot find. Now within our parentheses, we can specify a lot of different things, but we're gonna keep it really simple right now. We're just gonna say D-I-V. Let's go ahead and run this. What this is gonna bring up is the very first div tag in our HTML, and that's gonna be this information right here. Now let's copy this, and we're gonna do the exact same thing, except we're gonna say find underscore all. Now let's run this. Now we're gonna have a ton more information. Really all find and find all do is that they find the information. Now find is only gonna find the first response in our HTML at least. That's the div class container. Let's go back up to the top. That's our div class container. But find all is gonna find all of them. So it'll put it in this list for you. So it's gonna have this first one and it goes down to uh, this forward slash div, which should be right here. And then we have a comma, which separates our next div tag. So that is how we can use it. Now, what if we want to specify one of these div tags? We pulled in a ton of them, but we want to just look for one of them. Well, this is something where the class comes in handy because right now we have class is equal to container, class is equal to colmd-12. Uh, I don't know what these are at the, off the top of my head, but um, usually they'll be somewhat unique and we can use these to help us specify what we're looking for. For example, just kind of glancing at this, we can also use this a tag if we wanted to look at this. So we could say, oh, we're looking for uh, these hrefs. So we have an href here, and in this right down here, we have this href as well, which again, uh, if you remember from a previous lesson, that stands for a hyperlink. Now, something like the class or the href um, or these IDs, these are all attributes. So we can specify or kind of filter down based off of these. Now let's try it. So what we can do is we can do class first, and this is kind of the default uh, within something like find all, is you can even do class underscore. We can come right back up. We have this div, and then here's our class. So again, we have to have the div and the class. If we took this a tag, this is an a tag, which would go right here with the class of something like navlink or something like uh, navlink again down here. We need to specify that more. But we have our div, so we'll say col md12 right here. And let's go ahead and run this. And now it's gonna pull in just that information. Now we're still getting a list because we have multiple of these. So this div class uh, col md-12 doesn't just happen once. If we scroll down, 
we'll see it multiple times, something like right here, uh, or actually, let me see, right here. So here's this comma, then here's our next one. So we have two of these uh, div tags with a class of col md 12. And in each of these, we have different information. This looks like a paragraph with this p tag right here. And let's scroll back up. Uh, so I also think we should try out doing something like this p tag. Typically, these p tags stand for paragraphs or they have text information in them. Let's try to p tag really quickly and let's just see what we get. And let's run this. And it looks like we get multiple p tags. Now, if we come back here, you can see that there's this information and it's this information that we're pulling in. And I'm just you know, noticing that from right here. And then we have this information right here. And it looks like there's one more, which is this href, which looks like this open source. So data via, and then that uh, hyperlink or that link right there. So we have three different p tags. Now, just to verify and make sure that that's correct, what we could do is come over here. We're going to click on this paragraph. And it's going to take us to that p tag where the class is equal to lead. Let's come over here and look at this paragraph. Now we have another p tag right over here where the class is equal to glyphicon, glyphicon slash education. I have no idea what that means. Um, and then we'll go to our last one, which is right here, where the p tag is equal to, uh, we have a tag, href, class, uh, and a bunch of other information. So let's say we just wanted to pull in this paragraph right here. Let's go here and see how we can specify this information. So it looks like p, where the class is equal to lead, that looks like it's going to be unique to just that one. So if we come down here, we're going to say comma, and it was class. So you can do uh, class underscore is equal to, and then we're going to say lead. Let's try running this. And we're just pulling in that information. Now let's say we actually want to pull in this paragraph. We actually want this text right here. And this is a very real use case. You know, let's say I'm trying to pull in some information or, or a paragraph of text. Well, let's copy this. And what we're going to then do is say dot text. And let's run this. Now we're going to get an error right here. And this is a very common error because we're trying to use find all. Unfortunately, find all does not have a text attribute. We actually need to change this to find. Typically, when I'm working with these find and find alls, I'm using find all most of the time until I want to start extracting text. Then when I specify it, I'll change this back to find just like this. Now let's try this. And now we're getting in parentheses this information. Now, this is all wonky. It needs to definitely be cleaned up a little bit. But if we go back up, it's no longer in a list. And we no longer have things like these p tags in here or this class attribute. So we're really just trying to pull out this information. Now, again, this does not look perfect. We could even try to do something like dot strip. Look like there's some white space. Uh, and that cleans it up a little bit. This definitely looks a little better. Um, and we could definitely go in here and clean this up more. But just for you know an example, this is how we can then extract that information. Now let's look at one more example. This is some information and this is what we're going to do kind of our little mini project in the next lesson on. Let's say we wanted to take all this information. Well, what if we wanted to pull in something like the team name? Well, that's going to be in right here in this TR tag. And each of these TR tags have TH tags underneath them. So if we scroll down, you'll notice that each row is this TR tag. So let's go ahead and search for, uh, let's do TH. Let's just search for that first. So let's come right back up here. Let's use this find all. And we'll get rid of this text for right now. And let's just say we want to look for the TR. Is that what we said we were looking for? No, TH. So let's say we're looking for TH. Let's go ahead and run this. So we're going to have underneath this TH, we have team name, year, wins, losses. And notice these are all the titles. So these titles are the only ones with these TH tags. If we go down, you'll notice that the date is actually TD tags. So now let's go back and look for TD. We'll say D. And this is going to be a lot longer. We have a lot of information, but these are all the rows of data. Let's see if we can just get one piece of this data. We're going to get back. We want just this team name. That's all we're trying to pull in 
for now. Um, and then we'll try to get this row. And then in the next lesson, we're going to try to get all of this information, make it look really nice, and then we'll put it into a pandas data frame. So let's just get this team name right now. So let's go ahead. We're going to say TH. Let's run this. And we have this TH. And now that we know we're getting this information in, we can do find. Let's run this. So there's our team name. I'm just going to say dot text. And again, we can do dot strip just like that. And bam, we have our team name. So you can kind of start getting the idea of how we're pulling this information out. We're really just specifying exactly what we're seeing in this HTML. And what's really, really helpful and you know, it's something that I do all the time is I'm inspecting it. I'm just kind of searching like, how, what do I want? What piece of information do I want? Then I go ahead and click on it. And then I'm looking, you know, where is this sitting in the hierarchy? It's within the body. It's within this table with the class of table. Then it's down here where this TR tag and then this TD tag. So I'm looking kind of at the hierarchy and I'm specifying exactly what I'm looking for. So that is what we're going to look at in today's lesson. That's how we can use find and find all. We were able to look at classes and tags and attributes and variable strings, which is this right here getting that text uh, and variable strings. And we will look at find and find all and how it's pulling that information in and how we can specify exactly what we're looking for. Now in the next lesson, which is definitely going to be the most exciting one, we're going to try to pull in all of this information. So every single thing, because we'll be able to put all this information into a data frame, which then we can use pandas to really search and manipulate that data within that data frame. So with that being said, that is the end of this lesson. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. I will see you in the next lesson.